I'm from Creative Hearts Academy in Atlanta, Georgia. I'll be performing a scene from A Little Princess by Francis Burnett. The younger children adored Sarah. More than once, she had been known to have these despised ones in her own room, and her doll Emily had been played with, and Emily's own tea service used. Lottie Lee worshipped her to such an extent that if Sarah was not an Emily person, she would have found her tiresome. Lottie had been sent to school by a rather flighty young papa who could not imagine what to do with her. See, her mother had died, and her strongest weapon was that in some mysterious way she found that a very small girl whose mother had died was a person who ought to be pitied and made much of. So it became her habit to make great use of this knowledge. The first time Sarah took her in charge was one morning when she heard both Miss Minchin and Miss Amelia trying to surpass the angry wails of the child who evidently refused to be silenced. What is she crying for? Sarah said. I have it any more! screamed Lottie. Lottie! screamed Miss Amelia. Do stop, darling. Don't cry. She ought to be whipped, claimed Miss Minchin. You shall be whipped, you naughty girl. Lottie wailed more loudly than ever. Miss Minchin's voice rose until it almost thundered. Then, suddenly, she sprang up from her chair in impotent indignation and flounced out of the room. Sarah had paused in the hall, wondering if she ought to go into the room because she had recently begun a friendly acquaintance with Lottie and thought she might be able to quiet her. When Miss Minchin came out of the hall, out of the room and saw Sarah standing in the hallway, she looked rather annoyed. Oh, Sarah, she said. I stopped because I knew it was Lottie and I thought perhaps, just perhaps, I could make her stop. Might I try, Miss Minchin? If you can, you will have a child, said Miss Minchin. I dare say you can. Go in. When Sarah entered the room, Lottie was screaming and kicking her small fat legs violently, and Miss Amelia was bending over her in consternation and despair. Do stop, darling. Don't cry. Then, in another tone, if you don't stop, Lottie, I will shake you. Oh, poor little girl. Stop crying, you wicked girl. Sarah went to them quietly. Miss Amelia, Miss Mitchell says I may try to make her stop. Might I try? Miss Amelia looked at her quite hopelessly. So, Lottie, Sarah, do you think you can? I don't know whether I can, said Sarah, but I will try. If you will steal out of the room, I will sit with her. We've never had such a dreadful child before, said Miss Amelia. I don't believe you can keep her. But she left the room, quite happy with an excuse for doing so. When Sarah stood by the howling, fur furious child for a few moments, and then waited, then she sat down. This was quite a new state of affairs for Miss Lee, who was accustomed, when she screamed, to hear other people protest and implore and coax by turns. Having paused a few moments to find this out, she thought she must begin again. I haven't any mama! But her voice was not so strong. Neither have I, said Sarah. This was so unexpected that it was astounding. A new idea will stop a crying child when nothing else will. Having paused, after hearing this and being distracted by this for a few minutes, Lottie said, Where is she? Sarah paused a moment. She went to heaven, though I don't know. She comes out sometimes, I suppose. So did yours. Perhaps they can both see us now. Lottie sat bolt upright and looked about the room. Sarah began on with her story. You could have said what she said was rather like a fairy story, though it was also real in her own imagination. There are fields and fields of flowers she said, talking rather as if she were in a dream, and then the soft wind blows, drops the scent of them into the air, and the little children run about in the lily fields and laugh and make little wreaths. Lottie, Lottie would have stopped crying and loved to listen to the story, but you have to admit, this story was prettier than most others. She scooted up close to Sarah and drank in every word until the end came. When it did come, she said, I want to go there. I don't have any mama on this school. Sarah saw the danger signal and came out of her dream. I will be your mama. Lottie's dimples all began to show themselves. Shall she? She said. Yes. And we will go upstairs and wash and brush your hair. To which Lottie agreed quite cheerfully and trotted upstairs with Sarah without even to remember that the whole of last hour's evening had been caused by the fact that she didn't want to be washed and brushed for, for lunch. And from that moment, Sarah was an adopted mother. <laughs>